and um, I'm greeting you from sunny at gray Berlin, Germany. Once the winter hits, it tends to just become completely gray here. Um, I don't know, at least coming from Wisconsin, and I feel like I say this every winter, but at least coming from Wisconsin, America, um, it just always, it really, really seems so gray here in the winters. We only have a couple of sunny days and it's just strange. Um, you definitely start to miss the sun. I love the cold. This is my favorite sort of temperature and today it's not really even that um, cold. I think it's maybe 14 degrees, so it's quite a comfortable temperature. Um, I'm wearing my featherweight cardigan. Um, I finished this quite a while ago. I think I finished it in the summer. I love it. This is knit out of Wollen Vine Yarns in her fairy hair colorway. This is in her Volka base and it's my most worn cardigan. I have a um, I have another featherweight, which I've actually been wearing a lot lately. I finished it before I finished this one, and I thought, I don't know if I'm really happy with, with the way that this turned out. Um, it was knit out, out of the Query Fiber Arts, and then I did the trimmings in um, Maya from the Wool Barn. Um, I did that in her blue tweed colorway, which fit perfectly to the sweater. It was insane. Um, but anyway... Um, I love it. I've been wearing that one a lot lately. So I have been doing some knitting this week. Um, I have gotten pretty far on my foraging mittens. I, When my mom was here in September, she was here at the end of August through September, I'm sure you guys remember, um, we dyed some yarn together. My first yarn dyeing experience um, I experienced with my mom. And that was so much fun. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed the video at the end of last podcast where I showed a little footage of Tina dyeing her first skein of yarn. I really, really, really wish that I would have um, filmed some footage with my mom. I took some pictures, um, but I didn't film anything. So that really stinks. I don't know why, why I didn't think to do that. I already have my Christmas cups out. I'm sure those of you who are following me on Instagram think what is wrong with this girl because I'm using my Christmas plates. I've been listening to, um, we have Amazon Prime and Amazon Fire. So we have Fire TV and I've been listening to the holiday station, the classical holiday station with like Bing Crosby and Burl Ives and Nat King Cole and Mario Lanza, who my mom always listened to when she was little and who drives my dad crazy. <laughs> um, yeah, I've been doing all of the Christmas things and yeah. I'm already thinking about Christmas gifts. I have one Christmas gift planned out as far as knitting goes that I'm gonna talk about in just a little bit. So here are my foraging mittens for my mom. This is the yarn that she dyed and I Love it. I really, really love it. Um, I'm dyeing yarn right now, so maybe I will duplicate this yarn. Maybe I will re-dye this yarn and have it be a normal one in the shop because I honestly am crazy about it. It has different shades of pinks and purples and browns and mauves It's and creams. It's just, I think, a really, really pretty colorway. So... I knit these in my Olsen base, which is a fingering weight, 75% BFL, 25% nylon. I now, my first round of orders and my first round of dyes, I was using um, a different BFL base. So it's still called Olsen, but it's a softer base now, this time around. Sorry, Kay. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so um, this round of BFL is much softer, um, and I love it. I really, I like it a lot better. And it's from Germany, so it's a local one. So I'm really, really even happier about that. Um, so I just have the thumbs to knit, and I, I honestly love knitting this pattern. For any of you who 
um, are thinking about purchasing the pattern, it's a pattern by me, um, or who have the pattern already and are thinking about casting on, I definitely have to say that it is a pattern that is easiest. You can definitely do it on, um, on circular needles, but it's definitely a pattern that's good for double points. That's kind of what the pattern is written for. Um, but yeah, now that I'm looking at this, I'm wondering if one cup is a little shorter than the other one. It almost looks like it. Maybe I just blocked it out a little bit differently. Anyway, so I have to do the thumbs on these. And I was talking to my grandma on the phone last week, I think. And I really want to make her something. And so she asked me if I could make her a pair of foraging mittens. And she wants me to dye her some, um, or knit her in a yarn that I already have. Um, some really pretty green foraging mittens because green is her favorite color. And when I think about that, I just think of deep evergreen. Pine green is her favorite. So I think I'm going to have enough of this yarn to knit a pair of foraging mittens for myself, which I think would be so much fun to, um, to have my mom have the same pair and then myself have the same pair. And because I just love them so much. I love this colorway so much. And I'm excited to cast on another pair for my grandma. I honestly, I love knitting this pattern. It's just really fun. Um, it's one that you don't have to think about so much. And I don't know, I just, I enjoy it. It's, it's a really therapeutic knit for me. So, you know, I was thinking about it, and I think it's so funny how I can remember when I first started knitting. Um, when I first started knitting, I knit a couple of things, like leg warmers were kind of things that I started knitting on, like a worsted weight yarn. Um, goodness, what what is that brand? Lamb's Pride or something? It's a 100% wool, and I knit a couple of things on worsted, but my grandma, she knits on worsted as well. I would say her two general weights that she knits on are a sport. And for those of you who don't know, I haven't talked about my grandma in a while, so watch the beginning episodes. I talk about her all the time. <laughs> and I don't know why she's kind of left my mouth from the podcast. I think about that often. Um, but anyway, my grandma generally is knitting on a sport to fingering weight yarn. She really, really loves the finer gauge of knitting. Um, and her mother, um, Ruby, liked an even finer gauge. She was often knitting on zeros and ones um, for mittens and socks and things like that. Um, and so anyway, I was always seeing these hats and mittens and um, I don't think she really knits hats on fingering weight. She uses more of a sport uh, to worsted for a hat, I guess, or DK even. But anyway, I had always grown up seeing these really pretty fine projects. And so that's kind of more of what I was drawn to. And my grandma always spoke about how much nicer, you know, fine, finer garments are and how much more delicate and pretty they look and so just hearing this in my ear all the time I started to appreciate that as well. Yeah, they take more time but um, it was just I kind of always wanted, you know, to my grandma to be excited about what I was knitting on and I kind of, I don't know, it must have just gotten in my ear that I just wanted to have her be, like I said, excited and love what I was knitting to. And I just started to like like that look better. So it's funny because even now I almost, I've hardly knit anything on a heavier than sport weight yarn. Um, almost all of my projects and almost all of the yarn that I have, basically all of my yarn I would say, um, is fingering weight. I have a couple skeins of um, worsted, I have one skein, no, I have three skeins of bulky, I can even think of the amount, I have a bit of yarn, 
Um, and somebody asked in the Now is the Time to Ask thread if I would ever give a tour of my yarn stash. I definitely could see doing that. Um, I would say once we move, I will do that. I think that would be a lot of fun because I will have my own office then. So I would love to do an office tour. I think that would be so much fun. Here you can kind of see my workspace behind me. So there's not a lot of excitement there. <laughs> um, and then my yarn stash is in a completely different room. It's in the office. So it's kind of Robert's work stuff and then all, all of my crafting stuff. Um, yeah. So I'm working on, I don't even know how I got off on that rant. Almost, well, I am working on all fingering weight projects. So the next project that I have been working on a bit are my home for the holidays socks. And these are on, um, this is on my, my yarn, Olsen base. And I'm already at the decreases. So I've knit the the foot or the cuff. I've knit the heel. I did a fish lips kiss heel. And now I'm knitting the foot and I've just started the decreases. I'm almost done. You'll hear that little jingle. And that is my cute little a homespun house candy cane and jingle bell progress keeper. Um, I am using stitch markers from such wonderful stuff and um, my carbons. I think these are 2.5 millimeter fixed needles. So that's a lot of fun. Um, I know it again. Some people think it's crazy that I'm already knitting on Christmas socks, but I really wanted to see how this yarn knit up before I dyed more of it. So that's why I cast it on and then I decided to dye a bunch of it. <laughs> so um, yeah, I love it. I really, really love the way that it's knitting up. And I think this yarn will be really, like Kay from the Bakery Bears podcast says, um, BFL is a nice, soft base. You know, it's not as soft as Merino. It comes close, but um, it's so sturdy. It's so perfect for socks. And I'm really curious how this would knit up on like um, a four millimeter needle, like a US six. I'm curious how it would work up as a shawl. It feels comfy. It definitely feels nice and soft up to the neck. This is my Olsen base. Um, it doesn't feel scratchy at all, and it dyes up beautifully. I love the, the color that this gives, and I love that little jingle. I know Minerva Turkey talks about that in a podcast, like a long one that she made a long time ago. And then I also have these ones on the needles. I've knit just a little bit more. I would say maybe 10 rows to the foot. I'm not even going to take it out of the little DPN cozy that I bought from Danny of Little Bobbins podcast. Um, what else have I been working on? I've been working more on my shawl. I need to have a day that I can really sit down and work on this. Um, I love this shawl. I talked about this in last podcast, so I'm not going to go on about it, but I can just show you a little pop of it inside of the bag. This is inside of my Adelaide Cottage bag. Um, and I love it. I really love this bag. It's really nicely made. And she always includes these really cute little progress keepers on there. She has an Etsy sh shop, if you're wondering. So, yeah. I'm hoping to get this finished soon, but being realistic, I don't think it will happen for, I would say by December, just because I'm so busy doing stuff. Um, so then the final thing that I've been working a little bit on is my Kermes cardigan. So this is what it looks like. It smells amazing. I must have a thing of... <laughs> I must have a thing of tucked woolens in there. Let's see. Or maybe I don't and the bag just smells really good because I've had it in there. I don't. So I'm using my marbles needles and man, it smells really good. And it's super bright, super colorful. This will be nice and oversized. Um, 
and it's fun to knit. I desperately, desperately want more cardigans, um, hand knit cardigans. And I even consider knitting um, another featherweight just because it is such a, again, I'm really about the therapeutic meditative knits right now. I think just because work is so busy. I am busy with work. The seriously, the second I wake up, sometimes, definitely until Adoti comes home, um, and then when she goes to bed, sometimes I'm doing you know little things that I can do while Robert and I are hanging out, you know, making progress keeper stitch markers, reskating yarn, it's just stuff like that, which I try not to do, you know, when it's mine and Robert's time together. By the way, thank you so much for all of the nice things that you guys said. Um, about our podcast together. It was really, really fun and totally um, just random that he happened to come on. Um, Versades Unite or something? I can never remember the name of this shawl. Um, but I loved it. I remember I saw it, I favorited the pattern immediately. I just could never find a yarn. That's my problem with his patterns. I have such a hard time picking a yarn to to go with it. Like there are so many choices that I like, and then I'm like, oh, I don't want to open up a new cake. I don't want to cake up a new skein of yarn. I want to use yarns that I have. Finally, I was like, you know, oh, I have the wrong bag. <laughs> Finally, I was like, you know what? Just pick your yarns because, like I said, Robert has stolen my campsite shawl, which he basically wears all the time now. And um, I thought I I have to knit him a uh, a shawl of his own that is actually knitted for him because it will be extra special. He has no idea about this, so I immediately chose this colorway, which is just like the campsite shawl. This is the squash blossom. I think is what it's called. It's the leftover skein from the first um, Whispering Pines that I knit. So I'm using that. I am using a an amazingly beautiful speckle dyed yarn from Maya of the Wool Barn. I will show you all of these together after I... Then I am using, I think this is called like Ink Blot or something from Skein Yarn. And then I am using Chocolate Shop from Hue Loco. So I think these colors will look... I have really small hands, so this is going to be very hard to show. <laughs> so I think these colors, I'll stick them in there, will look really nice together. And I think he will love it. So what is the pattern, <laughs> you probably ask. Um, I am quite sure I'm going to knit him an exploration station. I think he will love it. I don't know how I feel about this at the bottom. I, I almost feel like that for Robert anyway, that might be a little bit too feminine. So maybe, so maybe I will just do a ribbed edging or something. I'll figure it out as I go along. Um, or I could even just end it with a big brioche chunk. Um, but I love this. I have seen this everywhere. I've seen so many different versions of this pattern. I think it is amazing. And from what I've heard about it, it is so much fun to knit. So I'm hoping that I as well have a lot of fun knitting it. I want to have it done for Christmas so that um, I can give it to him as a gift. I think, I think he will love it. I think he will, he really likes, you know, colorful things. He's not a guy who is afraid of color at all. Um, as you saw, his favorite skein of mine is um, birthday cake, which I didn't have on hand at the last podcast. And I do have some of it here. So this is one of his favorite yarns of mine. <laughs> That's a man who definitely is not afraid of color. Here's one that has a little bit more color in it. But um, 
but yeah so pretty so um that's kind of my plans i really want to knit a sweater um, i think i was starting to say this and then got off track like i always do i really really would like to knit a sweater um, and soon i really want to cast it on but um, I'm starting to feel not even necessarily overwhelmed, but um, I was talking to a friend of mine and we were kind of talking about monog being a monogam monogamous knitter and then being someone who's knitting on a lot of projects. And I'm definitely a person who has a lot of projects going on. And she's just kind of been knitting for a year, um, about. And she says she's a monogamous knitter. She always has one project on the needles. Right now she has a shawl on the needles. And she desperately wants to cast on Maria Monska's Dew Shawl, um, along with a pair of my foraging mittens. I love the Dew Shawl, by the way, Maria, if you're watching. It's beautiful. Um, it's my favorite shawl design of yours. Anyway, um, if you guys haven't checked it out, definitely go and have a look at the Dew Shawl. It's absolutely stunning really pretty design she maria is she's a really she she's naturally talented at designing um anyway so it's kind of funny because i feel like this is often the case i don't know if it always is but when you start knitting um at least I was like this too. I always just had one project on the needles. I definitely didn't start off and have a lot on the needles. And so I told her, I was like, you know, once you start getting maybe two projects on the needles, then I'm sure you'll see, oh my goodness, this is so much fun, you know? If I really want to knit one evening and don't feel like knitting those really long rows once you get deeper into the shawl, then, you know, you can pick up a pair of mittens or pick up a pair of socks and knit a couple of, you know, 50, 60 stitch round rows, um, which is just really nice, I think. But then, um, as I was thinking about it, I thought, oh my goodness, how liberating would that seem to have one, all of your project bags empty and one project on the needles. That is something that I, that is, I cannot fathom, like that just seems so crazy to me. But also, so exciting. <laughs> I would say that's a goal of mine, but I know it is, there's no way I could reach that. It's impossible for me. Um, I like having different things to work on. I have been finding that as I, my business grows, I definitely work on one project a little bit more. Um, but I could not have just one because, for example, like I just said, I always want to cast something new on. Um, I'm really excited to cast on the new pair of, pair of foraging mittens for my grandma. I'm really excited for the exploration station. I'm really excited, um, so excited, to cast on um, a new sweater for myself. And um, I, if you guys have any um, ideas for an Aran weight sweater. Um, I would like it to be, I think I'd like it to be a little bit oversized, a little bit of an oversized sweater. I really like the stone cutter sweater that Lara and Kristen are knitting. I think that's a really beautiful pattern and I think it could look really pretty oversized as well. Um, cause I just really like the the look of an oversized sweater. But then I could also see just being a really basic sweater too. Um, but I think it would be fun to join in in the stone cutter um, knit along. I know that's knit in worsted, but I could totally, obviously, easily modify it for an Aran weight. So maybe I'll do that. We'll see. I've seen a lot of, of sweaters that I really love though. Um, I wanted to answer some questions from now is the time to ask thread because I haven't done that in forever. Um, so I don't, I think this is where I left off. Lottie Lussie Cat asked, your favorite yarn shop in Berlin, do you attend any group meetings in Berlin? Okay, so that's her first question. My favorite yarn shop in Berlin, I don't really have one. 
So I can't even really answer that. I haven't been to a yarn shop here that I love at all. I haven't been. Loop is okay. Um, they don't really have the greatest yarn, but the people in there are kind of nice. I wouldn't say overly nice at all. They just at least greet you. Um, the other ones that I've been to, I have not met a nice shop owner at all. So um, I find that that's really common in knitting shops. You often get a lot of um, snobby shop owners which I don't understand. Um, I feel like sewing is completely different. I've been in a lot of handmade sewing shops here and the shop owners are often very nice. Um, so I'm sorry, Lottie, I don't have a favorite uh, knitting shop here. If you have one, I would love to know what it is because I know that you've lived in Berlin. I don't think you live here anymore. And I would love to find a really nice um, place to go to. As far as knitting meetings, also not. Um, I kind of thought about starting one myself. If any of you live in Berlin, PM me and I would love to start some sort of knitting group in the evenings. I think that would be really, really fun. So PM means personal message. So send me a personal message on Ravelry if you'd like to, to do that. Even if it's two or three of us, it would be fun. Um, and yes, how is the whole bilingual thing working out for Enodi and you? Is she going to a regular German kita? Enodi does go to a regular German kita. Um, bilingual is working out perfect. I've mentioned this before. I spoke to her in German until she was two because she went to Quito when she was two and a half. And then I started to speak to her in English because I knew that her being in a in only German speaking Kita that she would learn German and be hearing it all the time when she was there. And I wanted her to communicate with the teachers and the children there, so I knew it was very important that her German was good. So she spoke, um, she speaks English to me now, I would say 50% of the time. Since my mom has been here and left, Enerdi speaks English so much. It's it's really insane and really exciting. Um, but she speaks in German. She knows that she speaks with me in English and her papa in German, so that's kind of cool. Um, and I think she said I said that she goes to a regular German kita. We are in the process of changing her kitas, actually, because we're not happy with her kita at all. <laughs> she has a, t a new teacher. She's never had the same teacher longer than six months, I would say, six to nine months. It's it's terrible. We, we aren't a fan of it at all. So um, we're looking for some sort of art, art school or a Waldorf school is what we, we're looking for now and hoping to start in the new year with that. Um, so someone asks, how do you spell Elodie's name? It's E-L-O-D-I-E. And you say it a low d, a low d. And that same person asked if we'd ever do a house or a stash tour. Definitely no house tour. Um, it's nice that you'd like to see at my house, <laughs> but a stash tour I could definitely see. Um, so someone asks, what is my makeup routine? My skin always looks so beautiful. You always have the prettiest lip color on. Thank you very much. That's really, really nice. Um, I have lately been using Lush skincare, so I, I actually, um, I don't think I've ever shared this on the podcast, but I went to school, um, I think the first time when I went to school, I went to be a, a makeup artist and, um, skincare specialist, a person who's like a dermatologist, um, esthetician. So, um, I, I learned all about that. So anyway, it's nothing that is interesting at all for me to podcast about, but, um, I worked here in one of the biggest spas in all of Europe at the Adlan Hotel and I did makeup for, um, and I did waxing and skincare and facials and things for, um, a lot of really famous people. So that was a lot of fun. Um, and then I decided that that's not what I wanted to do anymore. So then I started to get into um, 
owning my own business, I guess. So that was fun. It was also a creative thing. But yeah, so my makeup routine, I just use, Aveda is my favorite, my favorite, favorite skincare, hair care products. I love them. Um, so I like a lot of natural um, skincare, not necessarily cosmetics, but as far as um, cleaning. So I use a Lush uh, face wash bar for dry skin because I have very, very dry skin. And then I use an exfoliant. Um, every day I use um, I use uh, a Lush exfoliator and I do that I just wash my face twice a day um, I exfoliate once I use a mechanical exfoliant so that means mechanical exfoliant means ones that have grains inside of it um, and so that's what I really like because my skin is so dry I desperately need to do that and then as far as um, my makeup, I just wear a mascara. I don't wear any foundation <laughs> ever. <laughs> just because my skin is so dry, it wouldn't work. It would just look ridiculous. Um, I don't use any foundation and I just use lipstick. So it's really, really simple. I wear mascara and lipstick and I wash my face. <laughs> I didn't always have, and I wouldn't even say my skin is nice just because I think it's dry all the time. Um, and I didn't always have nice skin. I definitely had breakouts when I was a teenager. Um, okay. All right. I think that's fine. I don't know how many more you guys want to listen to, but I think next time I will... Um, definitely answer a few more of those uh, now is the time to ask questions just because it's fun and it's there so that I can answer them so I don't know why I haven't been answering those lately all right so now time to talk shop stuff um, I have been having a lot of fun doing kits so each week I've kind of featured a kit um, in the shop the first one was autumn is in the evening air and then I had autumn is in the afternoon air. Those are gone. <laughs> now I have Letter to Santa Claus. And these are gone too, but I wanted to share them with you so you kind of know what I'm doing. All of my kits will be... Okay, that's totally not true. I was going to say all of my kits will have the size of a bag, but my next kit will be um, a little bit shorter and wider. <clears throat> so this is the bag, and all of my kits right now are Christmas ones. So they all have these little um, Christmas tree progress keepers or zipper pulls with a pretty little bell and you can deck out your your knitting and you know clip that off when you need it that's what that's what I like about the zipper pull progress keeper because you can always take it off when you need to use it and then they all come with um, these I guess I can open one up they all come with special um, progress keepers and stitch markers that go with the kit so because it is um, Letter to Santa Claus, there's one of Santa Claus's reindeer, and there's Rudolph, and then there is a little green, pretty green bead on there. And then there's Santa Claus's boot, and then just a nice little Christmas candy cane. And um, these two little ones are stitch markers, and this one is a progress keeper. Just because I kind of like my stitch markers to be, um, more of a lightweight one. I don't like to use my heavier weight charms for a progress, for a stitch marker just because I feel like it's getting in the way way too much. So along with that, I where's my yarn? I have or I'm giving the um, home for the holidays yarn. Now let me grab that. Where's my skein of it? Hmm. Here it is. So that's how that looks. And there aren't any of those in the shop right now. They're completely gone. So that is that. And I have a bit of bags in the shop. I'm going to start sewing quite a bit of um, these sort of more patchwork styled bags, although I don't know if I would say they're, they're patchwork. I love this one. This is one of my 
most favorite fabrics, Christmas fabrics, the pine trees with the little ornaments. And then I thought it was really nice with the woodland creatures. So I will be pairing more um, like three toned bags together and not in this size. It will be more of this size with the three different fabrics. So I have the tigers. I have some of this pretty vintage floral. There are still some of these in the shop. Um, uh, notions pouches and these all have the little Christmas things on them too and then I have I have more but I'm not going to show everything there's the run I have this in two different colors and then there is these the little color block windows which are really pretty with the horses and the wheat and the flowers and yeah and all of my bags, like I've said, have handles on them now. Just because I think that, that is a really important touch. Um, my new Christmas bags and kits will be with this yarn, or this yarn, with this, just this fabric, with um, the green bottom. And they will be this size of a bag. A little bit shorter, like about this much shorter. And they will have my um, Festival of Lights colorway. Okay, so it's a very speckled yarn. It has yellows and greens. So my thought was um, a Christmas tree, so it's mainly green and white. It's mostly a bear base with green speckles. And then it has yellow speckles all over it, kind of like a mustardy um, yellow, but there are also some really bright pops. And then it has a little bit of, um, let's see if I can find a skein that's skeined up so that you can see it. And then like here, there are some speckle, some parts where it's really pink and red speckled for like the little ornaments and things hanging on the trees. So I love this yarn. Um, I've already put a lot of it in the shop, um, which people have bought, and I also am going to list some of this yarn. Um, this isn't dry yet, so that's why it's hanging on my Stellina base. So I dyed up a couple of skeins on that, and I love the way it looks. It still looks a little bit darker than it will once it's dried. Um, Mm, yeah, I, I made a bunch of mini skeins. I'm sorry, someone's cutting stones outside. So I made quite a bit of mini skeins out of that yarn. And I'll be selling some little mini skeins in the shop. And I also, on my Stelina base, dyed up um, blush. This is one of my favorite colors. Oh, um, okay, so I am not going to show you everything that's in the shop because I dyed up so much yarn this week. Berlin Sunset. I have Witch's Brew. There is Blush, which is my absolute favorite. I just think this colorway is so pretty. Um, I have some on worsted as well. This one Annie really wants me to make her a hat with. This is my pressed flowers colorway. So pretty. And then I have two new colorways. Well, I have Won't You Be My Neighbor, which is my Mr. Rogers colorway. Um, and then I have Falling Leaves. which Anity and I, and Anity, Robert, and myself, we all went for a walk, and we went to the park. I posted a picture on Instagram um, of us gathering acorns, and we just played for a long time. Anity and I played in the forest, and she had such a nice time. It was, I could really see that it was really, really magical for her there. And I'm excited to go back because I know she'll have fun. Um, we've been there a couple of times. We just haven't 
been there in the fall and we haven't played in the forest part of it. We've just played at the park where there are swings and a lot of different stuff to play on. Um, but this time I was just really wanting to show her some nature and talk about what autumn is and we talked a lot about the different color of leaves and so I dyed this in mind um, all of the different colors of leaves that we talked about. And then this one is the Half-Blood Prince. Of course, after Harry Potter. Um, I had someone message me, um, Lilo, and she said, I know you love Harry Potter, I love Harry Potter, come on now, get out of Harry Potter yarn. <laughs> and she also wanted a Harry Potter club, which, oh my goodness, would be awesome. I, I could definitely see that being my first club because I love Harry Potter so much. I just think it would be a lot of fun. So, this is my Half-Blood Prince colorway. There will be a bit of this up in the shop. I think it's so pretty. Um, it was a really, really fun one to dye. So, um, yeah, this will be up in the shop this afternoon. And anything else, you can go and have a look. <laughs> um, we had a really nice week. We carved pumpkins, um, which for some reason my pumpkins, my pumpkins are getting moldy on the inside. Why? I don't remember that ever happening, but I don't know if I would have paid attention to it as a child. Um, it was really nice chatting with you guys. Um, I'm happy that it was sooner rather than later, and I really look forward to hopefully seeing you guys next week. Have a really nice weekend, and I will see you guys soon.